Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Gotta be the best show on YouTube now. Now, I have here a very well used fishing reel that is at least had 25 years of good use from Graham. As you can see, ground bait bits all over it. Now, there comes a time in life when it's out with the old and in with the new. So, let's get rid of this. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's gotta go. Oh, it's gotta go. Listen. I'll get rid of the wife, but we ain't getting rid of this. <laughs> oh, right, fine. Keep that. I have here a brand new fishing reel. Not often seen on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This is the Tokushima HK4000. It has incredible oscillation and perfect line lay. And that perfect line lay means longer casting. And it has a gear ratio of just under 5 to 1. That means you can catch up to those big fish much quicker. And just listen to that drag sing. You don't even need a bite alarm for this one. And this HK4000 has no less than 13 ball bearings. That's smoother than a cold pint on a holiday. And it comes with two spools, color coded to help you. On one, on one reel here, we've got four kg line and on the other, we've got five kg line. That's one for carp and one for pike. And speaking of hot weather, a lot of the time when it's hot, fish, especially in lakes, will go up to the surface. Now many people think that these fish are uncatchable, but with the right technique and the right floating baits, we can show you how to catch them. Now everyone should recognise these. These are pedigree chum dog biscuits. They're hard. Carp anglers, they can drill them, they band them, or they can put them on a hair rig. But we like to use them soft. Let me show you how to prepare them. Now, to get those dog biscuits soft, you need to put them in a bucket or a bowl and fill them with water just above the level of the dog biscuits and let them soak and absorb up all that water for one hour. And this is the outcome. Here is the original dog biscuit. Here is the one soaked in water, almost over twice the size. It's soft, it's squidgy, easy to hook, and better still, guys, it floats. Now, if you soak them for too long, and let's face it, a lot of people can get caught up watching another episode of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, there is one tip to help you recover those dog biscuits. So here's the tip. If they're too wet, put them in a bit of newspaper, wrap them up, keep them in there for an hour, and you can actually see here, the newspaper has absorbed all that excess water that was on those dog biscuits, but they are still soft and squidgy. Now, if you're preparing them the night before, like most anglers do, to stop them drying up overnight, get a towel, soak it, wring it out, and then leave it on top of them overnight, and they should be spongy the next day. And remember guys, you don't need any colorings or flavorings, just a plain old dog biscuit as it is. Now if it rains or it's thunder, or the weather goes bad, you can always store some and put them in the freezer, put them in a plastic bag, dip them in, do the bag up, put it in the freezer for your next session. Now tackle is really complicated guys. A rod, a reel, some fishing line, and a hook. Right, I've got a size eight partridge hook here. That's all you need. Now, when you're hooking the dog biscuits, there can be a squidgy, there can be a soft side here, and a hard bit usually on the top. Now, if you go through that soft, straight through the soft like that, it can fall apart as you go to cast. It just falls apart. So, if I grab another one, so don't go through the soft bit, go through the hard outer edge, straight down with the hook, roll it around the hook like that, twist it, and just pop the hook point in there like that. Now, being a soft, squidgy dog biscuit, as you go to strike, bang, the biscuit falls away and the hook hold is much, much stronger. Now, if by any chance there's everyone's using dog biscuits or you're running out of dog biscuits, an alternative is good old fashioned bread. Don't rip it off with your hands, get a nice clean cut, pair of scissors, cut a nice square off like that, to hook the bread, just go through the soft bit first, into the cross, pull it through, and then have your hook point just shown on the outside. And if you want to add a bit of casting weight to that, just dunk it in the water really briefly, you don't leave it in there too long, 
and that should help you cast a bit further. Remember, if you're dunking bread in and out and you're still using the same bit, eventually it will come off. A good alternative. So there you go guys, you've seen the tackle, you've seen the bait. We're gonna head off for an evening session, two or three hours probably, over at Bowsaw Lakes in Hampshire. I've never fished there before in my life. Hopefully, we're gonna see if these will work. We're here at Bowsaw Lakes. It's a lovely summer's evening. England's actually got some sun for once. And we're gonna do a few hours of surface fishing. A bit of bread, a bit of dog biscuits. Hopefully we'll be able to get you guys some carp. And uh, yeah, we're seeing them feeding on the surface at the moment. The temperature's dropping now, so they're very lethargic at the moment. But as the temperature drops, hopefully they should, uh, they should be a bit more confident. But let's give it a go. We've been here probably about 20 minutes, I'd say now. And uh, we've tried a bit of bread, a bit of bread crust, and it's not been easy. Uh, very shy bites, but uh, the temperature's cooling now. So hopefully, we're still seeing them on the surface, quite a few on the surface, but now that the temperature's cooling, they might be on the feed a bit more. And we've got the first one just here on bread. It's not a big one, but it shows it works. There we go. Small little mirror. But it's on the feed. They're on the bite. We've got a few, gonna give it a few more hours and hopefully get some more. Hopefully a bigger one. The advantage of fishing with floating baits is that you can see immediately when you have a bite. There are no battery operated bite alarms. You are on constant full alert. And of course, if you see a carp cruising on the surface, you are immediately ready to cast them. The best of floater fishing can often be when other anglers have packed up and gone home. They throw in their leftover bait or even sandwiches and the carp move in to clean up. And once you see a carp start to feed on the surface, it's nerve tingling. Right, we're in the second swim now. Got away from the ducks in the last one. And uh, all the bread, bits of leaves and things like that have been blown into this swim. Uh, hence why there's quite a few carp here. Now the guy to the left of us has also been catching a, bit, a few more carp. So it's telling me that they're starting to get on the bite now. And the old saying, be there when they bite, We've only come for a three hour session in the evening and we have a fairly energetic carp on at the moment. Nice scaly mirror. Keep your unhooking rat near the water. In summer heat you need to get them back quickly. There we go guys, that's a lovely marked mirror there. Ooh, got a lot of energy still. Sun's setting slowly. Gonna get a bit more bread out there and hopefully get more on those surface baits. Low oxygen contents in warm water mean you can rest them in your landing net so they can swim away strongly. Here's something weird. Look at all these flies on the surface in just one area. The carp must see them there, but why don't they feed on them? Maybe they are just too small. To start floater fishing you need just bread crust or dog biscuits. 
There's no need for fancy colourings or flavourings, the carp eat them in plain form. And if you scale down your rod to an Avon with a one and a quarter pound test curve, you can get a great scrap. And with six pound line, stand a good chance of landing a double figure fish or even a 20 pounder. Right, well here we are, classic swim here. Got some lily pads over there, reeds down here as well. Some nice big trees for some shade. This is where those carp are gonna be. Generally at the end of the lakes as well, what we need to do now is chuck some dog biscuits and bread into the margins especially, into the margins here with the reeds and on the edges of those reed beds because that's where they're gonna be to keep out of the, the, the hot temperature. In bright sunshine, the carp may be right under the edge of the lily pads. Get your free offerings tight up against the pads to lure them out, and let some drift right up against the rushes. You can sometimes hear the carp sucking down baits that drift up against the stems. This is carp number five. We've been just on this little uh, peninsula type bit out here and uh, we've done a bit of baiting up with some bread and dog biscuits and this looks like a common carp actually and they're very very shy bites they're just nibbling at it they're not taking the taking the whole bait I'm guessing that's because of the heat and they've, they've probably been fished for quite a bit and this is looks like the first common of the session and this one was caught on bread off the, off the top Let's get him unhooked and get him back in the water. We're gonna get him back as quick as we can and hopefully get another one. I'll just let him rest there. Get him over the top of that net. Oh, there he goes. If you catch a carp from one swim, the others will be on high alert. It can be more productive to go searching out each swim. Throw a few pieces of crust or dog biscuits in and then return later. The more mobile you are, the more chance you have of finding a feeding fish. Look in every nook and cranny in hot, sunny weather, those carp can rest up in the most unusual places, and often right under your bank. On a good evening session, with little in the way of breeze, you can get a better catch than the anglers who have been sitting in the baking heat all day. It's a case of be there when they bite usually the last three hours of afternoon and evening. Right, well, although it's a beautiful evening tonight, there has been a bit of a breeze pick up. Now, a bit of wind or breeze on the lake is a surface fisherman's nightmare, because what it does is it blows your, your bread or your dog biscuit across the lake too fast, the carp know this, and it can actually leave a bow in your line, a big bend in your line, all that slack. Now, that can hinder you when you go to strike the fish, because what you end up doing is striking a load of slack and not actually pulling the hook into the fish's mouth. So you have to do what's called mending the line. Now this involves just either winding it as you cast and if, it's, if you can see the slack you either wind a bit quickly until you tweak the bread, until you see it tweak or you can lay the rod to whichever side, the reverse side of the bow that the line is in, you lay it to the side 
and then you can wind it a bit then as, again just to mend it and keep it as straight as you can you need that line to be really straight to the rod tip so that when you strike you have the best chance of setting the hook there we go so we've got five six i don't know seven dog biscuits there got a nice lily pads here okay so we just chuck them around just on the edge because the carp are likely to be hidden under there because that's nice and cool under there away from the sun so we're just throwing a few around the edge there's some reeds around here too so i'm going to throw some near the margins just around to the right and um, hopefully the birds don't see because again that's another surface fisherman's nightmare is birds try and do it when there are no birds near if there's ducks in the sight and they can see you they are going to come over and eat your bait Now you can also use a catapult, a bait catapult, just to get a bit further. Obviously, don't go out of your casting range. If you're firing them out halfway across the lake and you've only got a bit of bread on your line, chances are you're not going to be able to cast out that far with all the bait where you've now moved the carp to. So, we've got an island here, and a good spot for carp usually is just off the edges of the island. Not in the middle. Again, if you're casting at the island and you're, or you're baiting right in the middle of the island, if you go to cast there, you might overcast and you might snag in a tree a, you look stupid, B, you're not catching fish. So, just a handful, again, four or five. Put them in there, keep your hand nice and still, off to the edge, and that's about right. I could probably cast that distance. Again, if, you're, if your bread is getting wet, or your dog biscuit is getting wet, you're not gonna be, if you go to recast, it's gonna come off the hook. So you might have to keep changing your hook bait just to keep it dry. Now, obviously when it's summertime and the temperatures are warmer, the carp are on the surface, this also means they're more, li more likely to see you walking around and walking around the margins. So try, if you can, and find a swim with some bankside cover like this. That way you can creep up to the, uh, the margins, stalk the carp, you can see where they go, and hopefully they don't see you. You can just drop your bait over the edge here, and they don't, they don't see you, but you can see them. Well, literally just after the tip I just gave you about using some bankside cover and dropping it into the margins, we have fish number six, this time on dog biscuit. Let me just get him away from these reed beds and reeds. That's another mirror carp. They do scrap well here. Hopefully we'll get them in and we'll be able to get a nice picture for you. Because this looks like a nice photo fish. He's in! Hopefully he'll behave. There we go. A nice mirror carp. Caught on dog biscuit. Floating dog biscuit. And now we're going to get still for you. And then put him back in the water. And hopefully maybe get one more. I think it's going to have to be last fish of the day guys. Our stomachs are rumbling. We've given it our best shot and it looks like, to be honest, fish of the day as well. This looks like a decent sized fish. He's trying to get under those lilies. If they do that, you need to put a bit of side strain on it like that. Obviously that way to keep it away. But this nice bend in this rod is telling me that this is a nice fish. Oh, this is it. This is a good fish. Net's a bit far away, but... Guess who's going to get the net? The person that always leaves it miles up the bank, who hasn't even caught a fish today. I'm furious. Thank you very much.
Right guys, we're, we actually thought this one was way, way worthy, so we're going to give it away. I've, I've zeroed the net. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello ladies. Settle. It's a double, it's 11 pounds, six ounces. That's a nice fish too. 11.6. I feel another steel coming. Yes. And I feel dinner coming. <laughs> a good fish to, to finish off. That's got a belly to it, yeah. Yeah, that's got a nice gut. Well, there you go, guys. That just goes to show what you can do with two and a half hours evening session, floater fishing with dog biscuits and bread. We finished up with about seven fish and this lovely, if I hold it for you like that, get my arms around him. Oh, he's gonna go. A nice 11 pound, six ounce, I think. Mirror carp, look at that. Stunning, stunning evening. What a fish to finish on. That is totally awesome. Look at the gut on that. And off. Awesome. 